Hello friends and welcome to Knowledge by Nature. In today's video, we're going to be looking at everything that we are going to be using for the second grade. If you are interested to see what that is, stick around. So as I said, we're going to be looking at everything that I have picked out for our second grade year. There's a huge glare over there, but I plan on bringing everything to the middle so that we can go through it. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know that I am a homeschool mom to about to be second grader. We love all things homeschool and sharing our journey with you. And if that is something you're interested in, we would love if you hit that subscribe button and join our team. If you are returning, welcome back. It's always awesome to have you. So as I look at all of this that is on this table, I think, wow, this is a lot, but please remember that I do a looping schedule, so we are not going to do all of this on the same day. Some of it will be on a daily schedule, but most of it will be kind of spread out throughout different days. And she also enjoys having different options. So she likes to do different types of science on different days, different type of history on different days. And so as you're seeing this table full of curriculum, please know that this is not something that we are doing every single day. So we are not blowing through all of this curriculum every single day. This is just all the things that we are planning to use through the second grade year. This is everything except I have not purchased my math yet and I will show you what I'm planning to use but it is not definite yet so I didn't want to buy it yet and also I will show you some of the extra resources that we got that we're going to be using. So let's zoom in and look at what we're going to be using. All right, the very first thing that I'm going to show you is really a no-brainer for us. This is something she absolutely loves. She has thrived with this program, and it is all about reading level three. This is the teacher's manual. This is the student packet with the workbook and all of the cards that we are going to need for this level. And there also are the two readers that we get. I will definitely be doing a flip through on this, but it was really exciting to have a few things that I didn't have to wonder what we were using. And this is one of them. I knew we were just going straight from level two to level three, all about reading. So this is our reading curriculum. And now I'm going to continue on with our language arts. I thought it might be helpful if I could try to kind of keep the subjects together. So up next, we have the first language lessons for the well-trained mind. This is the book that I used for first grade, but it has first and second grade in it. And so we will just carry on using this book for second grade for our language lessons. For me, my top priorities is reading, writing, and math, and everything else I'm bringing a more gentle approach to. And so we took our time with this language arts, we're finishing it up, and we will go ahead and we will go into second grade. We will also go into level two with writing with ease with a well-trained mind. We started workbook one pretty late, so I don't know that we will actually completely finish first grade by the time we finish first grade, but we do have level two ready to go. And so again, I just wanted to continue with this. It's something we enjoyed. I feel like it's gentle enough. It's not something that's overwhelming that we can add for our language arts. And so I have level two that we're continuing on with writing with ease. I also wanted to mention this little primary composition workbook. I actually have one for first grade, but I also bought another one for second grade that she can start. And this is just a really nice lined paper with a little section at the top where you can like draw or journal. And so this is really handy to have with both the first language lessons and just some of our other curriculums that it's really nice to just have this primary composition notebook. And I just really liked this. And so I made sure that I picked up another one for second grade. I wanted to get just a little bit deeper into grammar this year just to kind of give her a little bit more practice because usually I would use maybe explode the code or something like that which looks similar to this. So I picked this one up. It's a grade one. I figured well, let's start easy and then that way we build our confidence really good and then we'll go through this a lot quicker also. So I will probably be purchasing the second grade one before too long into the second grade year because as you can see it just doesn't have a whole lot on it each day. So I think it will be something that will 
will be gone through quickly, but it's just a nice way to practice. And again, I didn't want to start with grade two because I wanted it to make sure that we were building some confidence with our grammar here. And I think this will go really nicely with my first language lessons because it's talking about parts of speech, common and proper nouns, contractions, tenses, subject, verb agreement, capitalization, and punctuation. So again, I think this is going to be very simple but I thought it was a good jumping off point to kind of add a little extra with our writing for second grade. Another book that we will continue with for second grade is our 100 Write and Learn Sight Word Practices. We have been working on this for first grade, and so we will continue on with this. I really didn't start this for a long time because it always bugged me that I was going to be wasting the page if I cut this section out. So we just decided not to cut this section out and she just writes it and then that way we can continue to use this book. And it's very nice. It is very good independent work, which is what I also had in mind with this grammar is it's very good independent work. If I am in the middle of something, but I need her to be doing something, these two are both things that she can go grab, do herself. This year, we are making a possible change with spelling. For first grade, we used All About Spelling. I think it's a really, really good program. I like it. You know that I love All About Reading, but I'm not quite sure how good it is working for her. So I am not 100% sure that this is going to be any better, but I did want to have an option for spelling. Again, this would be something that she could do independently once we got rolling with it a little bit and she understood what each week is going to be about. Again, I will do some flip throughs of these, but you have like this read and spell, copy and spell, cover and spell, then we have visual memory, word meaning, word study, and then you start the next week. So this would be really good for independent work for sure. And I just wanted to see if her spelling improved any using this. She's a decent speller, but there are a lot of things that I think we maybe need something more like this to try. So if this does not work, I'm definitely going to be picking up all about spelling too. But I did want to try this one first for a little bit just to see how we felt about it. All right, continuing on with independent work. We use Roller Coaster Rider for our cursive and we are going to continue to do that. But I saw this, I saw this curriculum from The Good and the Beautiful and they were actually having a sale, which is why I picked it up. But I noticed that they are doing the cursive and you follow the colors of the rainbow. So red, orange, yellow, green. I thought this would be a great way for her to practice her cursive independently and then we can work with each other with our roller coaster rider doing our uppercase because we are almost done with the lowercase. But I thought this was again a great way to do some independent work and we have some copy work where we're tracing the poem, a little bit of uh, adding on of drawing. I thought it was a really cute little program and I think it will be great way for her to practice her cursive by herself. If you watched any of my videos kind of towards the end of the year last year for first grade, I started putting the printing back into rotation with our cursive because I noticed how our print was really starting to falter a little bit. And so this is actually, I believe this is first grade maybe, but I wanted to go back and practice a little bit of how exactly we should be forming our letters. We've been working a lot on this already and this may be something I actually do during the summer. I'm not sure, but this is definitely a good book to do to be able to get those nice positions on the way that we start our letters and different things like that. So I wanted to do this again. We had done the orange handwriting without tears and I kind of gave that to her as independent work to be honest. And so I don't think she was ever learning some of the really proper ways of writing the letters. And so like I said, we've done a lot of that here at the end of first grade, but I wanted to work on this again because as you can see, it shows you here. First you do the magic C, then you bump up, you back down, and then you turn. And we have already improved so much since I've worked with her a little bit more. I thought this would be a great book to go ahead and work on our printing a little bit more. All right, so there is what we are planning to use for language arts. Now let's check out science.
All right, for science, another one that was really pretty easy for me to know exactly what to go to was Sassafras Science Volume 2. I actually have a flip through of this, so if you are interested in that, I will put that down in the description below. But we will have our spine here of following the Sassafras twins on their adventure, the logbook, and the teacher's manual. As I mentioned before, she likes to have different kinds of sciences going and different histories going at the same time. So I like to have another option for that. This year I'm trying another Evan Moore. I just see this is such a popular thing in the homeschool world. And so this year I've grabbed a few options for that. This is Skill Sharpeners Grade 2 Science. And this just looks like something she's really going to enjoy. It came from Amazon Ripped, so that was kind of a bummer. But we see that we are covering physical science, life science, space and earth science, earth systems, and science and engineering. I do not believe that you have to go in any sort of order for this. So if you wanted to start with the purple section, you could do that, or you could move over to the body parts section, the life science, or you could do the space. You can really start and go however you want to, but it's very colorful, very simple, just fun way to do some science. And then there is some wordplay, some vocabulary here, and then there is a little hands-on activity. She loves hands-on activities, and these just look like really fun, simple things for me to do, and I really like that as well. So we're going to give this a try. Like I said, this is the first time with this, but I think it's going to be pretty neat and a great way to kind of work multiple science programs at the same time. I purchased this Exploring Nature with Children for first grade. I sent it off to be printed and I actually didn't get it until much later in the year and we just couldn't ever get our footing on it. I don't know that we're going to use this, but it is something that I have. It's something I really would like to use, but I don't know if I'm going to. But this will be another option of if I want to use it throughout the year, but my plan is to mainly use this. We will go through volume two of Sassafras and volume three, hopefully, of Sassafras. So that wraps up our science curriculum. All right, now let's move on to history. Story of the world, again, that was something I had bought for first grade. I thought I would get to this sooner than I did. I didn't. Thanks to my looping system, second grade will hopefully go more in the order of what I'm expecting. So we are in this for first grade and we will continue on with this for second grade. We are enjoying the story sections of the chapter book. I don't know for sure if we go to volume two, if we will get the activity book. I'm still working on that one. Like I said, we haven't been into this too much. So this will definitely be something that we are continuing on for second grade to finish that up. Then I picked up this workbook and it is 180 days of social studies for second grade. And this covers civics, economics, geography, and history. Also, geography is going to be covered very well in Sassafras Science. I know you're thinking, why is geography in science? But it's very, very present in this series. And so honestly, there's a good chance we're going to be getting more geography out of our Sassafras Science than we're going to be getting out of this. But I do like, again, having multiple options. And how it rotates is you do civics, economics, geography, and history. So you don't just do history, history, civics, civics. It kind of goes through and you rotate them, which I think is kind of nice. I have not ever used one of these 180 days before, but I thought it would be a good one to try. If we don't like it, then I will know for next year that that's not what I wanted. In addition to those... I have some who was that we will be doing. So we have who was Harriet Tubman. I have this who was activity book, which I think is really cool. There is like little snippets of information along with the activity. So I think this will be a really fun one to add along with our history and delve into any of these a little bit deeper if we want to. Who was Nikola Tesla? Who was King Tut? Who was George Washington? 
And then these would kind of be history, geography. This is a Flat Stanley's Worldwide Adventures. So he goes to Mount Rushmore, the Great Egyptian Grave Robbery, the Japanese Ninja Surprise, and the Intrepid Canadian Expedition. I thought this would be a really fun set to add in with our history slash geography learning for second grade. Up next, I have art. This is something that I want to kind of approach very gently. It will not be an everyday thing. I'm thinking this will be something that's done like on Fridays. And there's quite a few things here, but they're not gonna be all done on the same day. So on Friday, we might do like this Evan Moore book and then another day we'll do one of these others. But the first thing that I got for art is Evan Moore, How to Teach Art to Children. This I thought was pretty neat because it teaches the seven elements of art and then it includes an ebook of artist work, an example of each project. So this covers a wide range of ages, like it says first to sixth. So I don't think this is something that we are going to necessarily finish in second grade. I think we will carry over into this, but it will be a really nice introduction on some art subjects. This is a book that I bought for first grade and I'm going to encourage her to use it a little bit more. This is the girls doodle book and they actually have a, a boys doodle book also. And it's just really cute and fun and kind of makes you think. So over here, how many butterflies are there? And then you draw the butterflies, draw the kittens in the shop. It's just really fun little finish the scene sort of thing, but you can you have to kind of maybe think outside of the box, and I just think it's a fun way to incorporate some art into the day. So I do want to encourage her to use this a little bit more this year. Then something I would like to make sure that we are doing is drawing together. So again, we might not do this every week, but I would like to do it a lot, and I had picked up quite a few of these. It's How to Draw 101. This one is Pets, and we have Monsters. And so there are about five or six steps on each one that shows you how to draw the image. This is just something fun. We can sit down together and draw. We've used this quite a few times with our different books and we will continue to use this for second grade. Like I said, I just brought out a few. We have 101 pets, 101 monsters, and 101 dolphins and other sea creatures. In addition, I picked up this DK The Arts, a visual encyclopedia. I, one, love DK books, and this one is beautiful. I like that they break it out into paintings, sculpture, photography, music, dance. It's just a beautiful book, and it offers a little bit of information, which I think is great for just a gentle approach into art. This will be something that we pick up occasionally, once a week, every other week, once a month. I don't know. We're not going to go crazy with art, but I do want to start getting a nice introduction to it. So we can open up one of these, take a look at one of these beautiful images, and just kind of talk about it and read some of the information that they have here. Again, DK Books, you just can't go wrong with them. They're beautiful, and this one is just fantastic. I can't wait to delve into it and just learn even more about art myself. Honestly, that's the fun thing about homeschool is that you continue to learn as well. Gorgeous. This last thing for art is actually something I picked up for first grade, but it's just a sketchbook. It's 100 sheets that are 9 by 12, which is a really nice size, and it's 60 pounds, so it's really nice paper quality, so it's really, really nice to be able to sketch in, and then she can just have all of her sketches in this book. We can date it and then have this for something really special to be able to look back on. Now let's look at what I'm using for logic at the beginning of the year. Last year for first grade, we used Lollipop Logic and we used Mind Benders. Of the two, I prefer Lollipop Logic because they bring in more than one type of mind skill. With Mind Benders, you kind of have the same puzzle throughout the whole book and it just gets more difficult as you get further into it. This set that I have here is really not like either one of those, but it's just a different way of getting her to think. These first two books are Two Truths and a Lie. We have It's Alive and we have Histories and Mysteries.
So it tells you an unbelievable truth about one of these things and then a few outrageous lies and you have to try to tell the fakes from the facts. And so I thought these were really, really neat books and I went ahead and picked them up just because I thought it was a different way to think about things. And it's about history, which she loves, and animals, which is pretty amazing. Then we are beginning the year with skill sharpeners critical thinking. I will probably end up buying Lollipop Logic the second set later in the year, but I did want to start out with these. This is Evan Moore, Grade 2, Critical Thinking. And let's look at the table of contents here. So we have animals, body, things, and places. So this is just a little bit different. I don't know how we'll like it, but I thought it was a good thing to try. And so our first thing is talking about alligators and turtles. And it has all this information that you go through. You're talking about them the whole time. And then I believe you finish with like a craft. Let's see. Yes, you get a craft at the end, which I think is so cute. And again, it comes with what you need for it. So you can just cut it out. Again, I will do a flip through of this if you are interested to see more. But I just wanted to try a little bit of a different approach into our kind of critical thinking this year. And that is why I picked up Evan Moore, Skill Sharpeners, and these two books about two truths and a lie. All right, up next I have our Spanish that we are going to be starting. And this is, again, going to be a very gentle approach I had looked at a few Spanish things, and this is the one that just seemed like it would be the funnest. I was really excited when I looked into it because I really do not like programs that come with like a CD or a DVD. I want to be able to get it digital, and this does come with a CD, but I went on the Classical Academic Press, and they actually were having a sale so I got both the DVD and the CD section as digital formats. So I'm really, really excited about that. I'm going to go ahead and start this because she tries to speak Spanish sometimes. And before we accidentally like really offend someone, I figure now is a good time to go ahead and actually start this. Again, it's going to be a very, very gentle approach. We're not going to do it very often, probably once a week, depending on how much she enjoys it. But I will do a flip through on this in case you're interested in it. And one more thing I forgot to mention earlier is that we will, of course, be continuing our online things as far as reading eggs, math seeds, uh, teacher monster to read. And I recently just found this fun little game on our phone that is called Monster Math. Those are three other things that we will be using along with all this curriculum for our second grade year in addition to probably starting some coding. But all of those, the Spanish, the coding, things like that, are going to definitely be very, very gently approached and only used as we feel that they are necessary. Let's keep going. All right, let's look at a few extra resources that I have here. This is what your second grader needs to know. I think this is going to be a really, really good book for filling in the gaps or for just adding in a little bit extra history or science. There is language arts in here. There's art, more art in here. There is also different stories, poems, tales. I think it's really fun to be able to read some of these that we might not have in some of our other books. There's math back here in the very back. So this is something that I'm not going to use all the time, but I think it's going to be great for filling in the gaps or for having that extra little thing of if she wants something just a little bit different from history, we can do this. A little bit something different for language arts, we can try this. I'm excited to kind of get into this. It won't be something that we use very often, but we can open it up maybe once a week, read a few stories out of it, pick something out of it that we might like, and just kind of pick and choose out of it as we want. This book right here was actually mentioned in The Well-Trained Mind, and I really like it. It has all these selections and stories. We read The Odyssey this year. We loved it, and it made me think about kind of introducing ourselves to even more literature like that. 
One thing that's really neat about this one is that one is broken up into like the listening level. Right here it suggests listening levels for like ages five and up, ages eight and up. You can kind of use this to your discretion. You know, your child may be more advanced and so they can listen better or maybe they don't have the greatest listening skills yet and so they would begin at maybe a lower level. But I do appreciate that they have that in there and then of course it tells us everything that is included has a little introduction and then something I thought was neat, let me find one here, is it actually tells you the approximate reading time, a little synopsis about the story and then any punctuation or vocabulary that you might need to know about before you actually start the story. I thought that was pretty cool. I really liked this reading time because you're like, hey, let's get in a quick little story. Which one would be the best? So I picked this one up and that was classics to read aloud to your children. I would like to introduce just a little bit more poetry, and this is something we had picked up last year that we really have used very little of. It comes with a CD, which you know, I don't like using CDs. I would rather have it digital, but I can come in here and I can read this and we can talk about all of these things together, and then it kind of breaks it up into different information. Cute little book. I like the images in it, and I hope that we actually use this a little bit more this year. We also have a stage full of Shakespeare stories that I would like to finish up this year. We've read one of them this year, and I would like to finish this up completely for second grade, having read all 12. And this is something I've had for quite some time, and we occasionally used it. But I had a book that was Community Helpers that she loved so I pulled this back out thinking that she might like this to kind of open it up and do a little bit more studying in it. I bought this used from eBay and it's like a really old DK version. There's another one that's out that's definitely more updated than this one, but I figured it will be fine for what we're using it for. But I think I will start introducing this a little bit more again, kind of loop it in once a month. We'll come in here, we'll talk about this student, and then maybe the next time go to the next one. That way she can see, even though it is very dated, there's probably still a lot of truth to a lot of this, and we can go in and we can see the differences in all the children that are like her. All right, we are going to finish up with math here. Like I said, I don't have my exact curriculum bought. We are going to continue using Life of Fred. We did apples, butterflies, cats, and we will actually be starting dogs very soon. So dogs may be something that is finished for the summer, and if it is, it won't actually be second grade, but it is a possibility that we'll be using dogs for second grade. And then I have Edgewood and farming. And if we finish up, possibly we will be finishing up with goldfish. I don't know for sure. This is something that we bring out occasionally. It usually comes out a few times a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. If she asks for it, we read it. If she doesn't, we might skip it, but she loves Life of Fred. I have all of the elementary and the intermediate set because it's just something she loves so much. And even when we're doing our other curriculum, she will ask to do this also. And so there's nothing wrong with just getting a little bit more math into our system. Now, what am I going to be using for our main math curriculum? If you saw at the end of my first grade year where I decided to compare dimensions and primary, you will know I am trying to decide between these two. So that is why you are seeing 1B because I have not actually purchased 2A yet because I am waiting to decide exactly if I am going to continue on with dimensions or if I am going to continue on with primary. We have used dimensions for KA, KB, and 1A, and I purchased primary to use for 1B. We are really, really enjoying primary, and I foresee primary 2A being a part of our second grade. I really don't think we will continue on with dimensions. I think we're going to be moving over to primary, but again, I want to finish most of this before I make that purchase. Because you all know curriculum is not cheap and I want to use as much of this and feel like I am as confident as I can be in math 
before going forward. So again, be on the lookout for my video of where I debut what we will be using because I will definitely do a flip through for you, but I do foresee us using primary, but either way, it will definitely be Singapore math. I just am not 100% sure whether it will be in the form of dimensions or if it will be in the form of primary mathematics. All right, well, if you stuck around to the end, thumbs up, please hit that subscribe button. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been very helpful for you and maybe we'll give you some good ideas about what you would want to use. A lot of these were really things that we were continuing on. It was kind of, we already knew we liked them, but we also have a lot of new books also. I'm really excited about some of these new curriculums that we've never used before. And I think it's gonna be a great second grade year. If you enjoyed this video again give me that thumbs up hit that subscribe button and if there are any of these that you would like to see a more thorough flip through on put down in the comments what you would like to see as well as if there's any that I already have done I will put those down in the description so check out the description if you're interested in anything if not put it down in the comments and I will definitely do that for you have a wonderful day I'll see you in my next one bye